Welcome back to Low Carbon Lifestyle. In the first episode I did back in April 2020, I tried to get you to think about how much you emit. I gave you a sneaky little trick that was the 250-250-250 rule for every kilowatt hour of electricity, every kilowatt hour of gas and every mile you drove. Well, let's put that into practice. In this video, I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about my emissions for 2020 and how I would go about working that out. Please do comment if you think I've missed anything, anything glaringly obvious. And um, please do like this video, share this video and subscribe to this channel. But most importantly, I'd love it if you could also count your emissions with me and comment below what they were for 2020. Let's have a look. Hello, my name is Tom and this is a little series about a low carbon lifestyle. Sometimes this whole sustainable living can feel well, well intimidating, whether it's thinking you need to buy an electric car or install solar panels on your roof. The majority of us can't do that overnight. We can't do that straight away. Or it looks like completely changing the way you live, living off the land or turning vegan overnight, both of which are fantastic things. But for this mini series, we're gonna talk through how each of us can lower our emissions in everyday life and what that might look like. So how would we go about counting our emissions for 2020? As I go through this, I would love it if you could have a think about what the main areas that you might have emitted CO2 were in 2020. I think there are some really simple ways that we can start counting our emissions for 2020. First of all, we can look at our gas and electricity bills. Then we can try and work out how far we've traveled and how we traveled. Then we can just think about the services that are done on our behalf, whether it's a local council or someone else. But then from where I sit, I think it starts to get a little bit more difficult. Trying to work out emissions linked to the things we've bought, the food we've eaten, and then all the other things that are going on, that can be quite hard to do. But let's have a go. So how many units of gas and electricity have you used in the last 12 months? On the 1st of January 2020, back in a different world, I was with the energy provider Bulb, which was a renewable electricity supplier. And then in April, I changed to Octopus for the tariff that I keep on blathering on about. So I'll have to dig out some old bills from Bulb and then have a look at my current account with Octopus. But both of them keep a count of how many units of electricity and how many units of gas I've used in this last year. Um, they use information from the smart tariff that we have to track that information throughout the year. So I can count quite easily. So what are we on for the year? Electricity, as you'll know, tends to be recorded in kilowatt hours. That's the amount of energy that we use uh, for electricity all the time um, and that's quite easy to convert to CO2 we just multiply it by the intensity the carbon intensity of the electricity grid the gas will tend to be recorded either as a unit in meters cubed of natural gas if used that could also be recorded in kilowatt hours with us with a, a conversion either way again we can convert to CO2 for every kilowatt hour or meters cubed of gas you've used okay so let's start with electricity my electricity meter was on 419 kilowatt hours on January the 2nd, 2020. If you can't find the exact date, as in the 1st of January 2020, it doesn't really matter. It, you could just use a, a date close to, to New Year. And that number we actually started on, 419, was so low because it was a new meter, a new smart meter, that we'd put in three or four months before then. On the 1st of January 2021, we were on 2,163 kilowatt hours. And that's a consumption of about 1,744 kilowatt hours. We can convert that to CO2 by looking at the average carbon intensity of the grid for 2020. As I've talked about before, the emissions of the grid change every single minute. I'm just going to assume that it's a constant average for, for 2020. Um, we could go into more detail probably every half hour and work out exactly how much we've done, but we're not going to do that here. So let's keep it simple. The carbon intensity I'm going to use for this calculation is from the MyGridGB website, which is an independent website that tracks the carbon intensity of the national grid uh, all the time. And it's got data back to, it's got detailed data back to 2012, but it's got data much further back than that. MyGridGB lists the carbon intensity of the grid uh, for 2020 as 222 grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour of electricity. If you dig into the stats a little bit, that's a 56% reduction from 2007 and actually a 9% reduction from 2019. And that's really good news. The, the electricity grid is decarbonizing and, we, and therefore we can get really low carbon electricity. 
So, multiplying that 1,744 kilowatt hours that I have used this year by the 222 grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour, we can get how much I've emitted in my home for the year. So for 2020, the electricity used in my home was, uh, that I used in my home emitted 387 kilograms of CO2. I live here with, with my wife Esther and our friend Mim. So if we split it by three, you get my fair share of electricity, the stuff I was responsible for. And that's about 129 kilograms of CO2 for the electricity that I used. Okay, good start. How much electricity did you use in 2020? Similarly, our gas meter was on 404 units of gas at the start of the year, at the start of 2020. Um, and on the 1st of January this year, we're on 1,503 units of gas. So we've used about 1,100 meters cubed of natural gas in that year. And we can convert this again straight to CO2, this time using the government's conversion factors that they publish each year. I didn't use that for electricity because I think the MyGrid GB website is a bit more live. It's a bit more up to date, even though the government conversion factors will catch up eventually. So in the data, Bayes assumes that natural gas emits 2.02 kilograms per meters cubed of natural gas. So for 2020, my 1100 units of gas emitted just over 2,220 kilograms of CO2. Just over two tons. Again, if we split that evenly between the three of us, that means that I emitted 764 kilograms for my heating, my hot water, um, and for some cooking. You can, if your bills are in kilowatt hours, you can also do that calculation by multiplying by 183 grams of CO2. And a kilowatt hour emits almost 200 grams of CO2, which similarly to, to electricity, almost 200 grams of CO2 as well. Quite interesting. Okay, good start. We've got our electricity and we've got our gas. Next up, I'm gonna look at how far I traveled. So I didn't fly at all this year, which is actually probably the first time since in like 2007. Of, of having a year without flying, and I'm really pleased about that. So that's a 2020 win, I guess. I didn't actually even take the train that much. I didn't really travel at all. So my travel missions are pretty simple for this year, and it comes down to the, the miles that we drove in our car. The ma majority of, of which I would have done with my wife Esther in our Nissan Pulsar out there, um, except for the epic road trip we had, where we went all the way up to Sky with, in our friend Jesse's camper van which was amazing. So including the miles we drove in the Nissan, which I think was about 7,200, and the miles we drove in the camper van, which actually was about 1,200, a really good road trip. If we include those two, we multiply by the emission rating of the car, which for the Nissan Pulsar is reported to be about 214 grams of CO2 per mile. And for the VW, from what I can tell, is about 276 grams of CO2 per mile. We can get our emissions for the year. I'm actually going to add on 20% to both of those because neither of them are new cars, so it shouldn't be, they won't be as efficient as they were when we got them. And for wear and tear and for oil changes and all that kind of stuff, I'm going to add 20% onto my emissions that year. That might be a bit conservative. So for what we drove in 2020, our emissions would be about 2,198 kilograms of CO2 for the two of us, or just 1,099 kilograms for me, just over a ton. Starting to stack up a little bit. Next, I'm going to add the emissions that my local council reports on my behalf for all the services that happen without me thinking about it. So uh, the bin wagons, the leisure services, the public health stuff, the schools, the lighting, the etc, 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 etc. For the year 1920, which is the latest the council has published, there were 51,878 tonnes of CO2 in County Durham. But that, if that's split across an estimated 530,000 people, we can work out what's my fair share. And that works it out at 98 kilograms per person. And that's, to be fair, not that bad for what the council provides us. So I would add in that 98 kilograms. And it should be fairly easy to find your, your council's emissions on their website. And if not, I'd put in a freedom of information request because they should be reporting them. Okay, so far, gas, electric, miles are driven and the, the emissions linked to my council. Next, I'm starting to put my finger in the air a little bit, and for that, I'm gonna go for some help. First of all, I'm gonna to go to my friend, Mike Berners-Lee, not really my friend, I wish I wish he was, but his book, How Bad Are Bananas, which tries to list the carbon intensity, the carbon footprint of pretty much everything we do. So I'm gonna use that for some help. I'm also gonna use this fun website from a lady called Rosalind Redhead, um, where, who was trying to live a one-ton lifestyle in 2020, in 2020. 
Um, and that must have been such a big challenge. But she was tracking how much she emitted for, for a period of time in that year. And she put a bunch of her calculations online. So I'm going to look at some of Rosalind Redhead. I'm going to look at some of Bernard Lee. And we'll get to some fairly reasonable assumptions, I hope, for the rest of my missions. So Rosalind counted pretty much everything, including all those things that we might think not we might think won't emit much uh, like our mobile phone. So for my mobile phone, I um, have a 10 gigabyte data service each month. Roslyn Redhead says that a gigabyte of, of, of data uses five kilowatt hours of electricity. And I can do that. That's, a, that's now a number I can understand and I can work out the carbon intensity of. Five kilowatt hours of electricity per month would be 60 kilowatt hours per year multiplied by the 222 grams again would be 133 kilograms of CO2. Okay, so let's add that in. Fact checking Tom here, it'll actually be 13.3 kilograms of CO2 per gigabyte of data, but I use 10 gigabytes of data, so I multiplied by 10, 133. Rosalind actually goes into quite a lot more detail about uh, about data and about internet use and about television, all this kind of thing, streaming services, all that kind of thing. I'm not going to go into that here, but I think that 133 is a helpful estimate for me. So next up, I'm going to ask the question, what have I bought? Um, and I'm going to have to go to Mike Berners-Lee for this one because I've really not counted what I've bought. I've, I've not had that particularly lavish a year, um, but I've probably bought more clothes than I really can remember. And I did get a new watch and I've probably gone through way too many single-use plastics and other disposables that I've not counted. I haven't really counted that this year. So I'm going to have to assume a proportion of emissions related to the rest of my emissions. Um, we're going to go for 25% of my total, partly because that's what Mike Berners Lee has in his assumptions in here. And that 25% Mike suggests is about the same as my emissions at home. So if I equate my emissions at home for gas and electricity with the stuff I bought, that's another 893 kilograms added to my total. Then food. Um, and again, I'm going to be pretty cautious here too. We had a whole episode with Nikki Dravis. Um, from Refuse talking about how difficult uh, the kind of sustainable diet and sustainable lifestyle when it comes to food is but for me I eat mainly vegetarian I eat meat for a treat at celebrations and special occasions but we tend to, uh, to only have vegetarian based meals at home and even sometimes vegan if we're lucky but I'm not going to give myself too much credit for that and I'm going to assume like most of other people that um, and I assume like Mike Berners-Lee again that my diet is responsible for about 24% of my emissions. So let's assume again that's equivalent to my emissions at home and we'll add in another 893 kilograms. We're starting to top up a little bit. Finally, I'm gonna add in a bit more for the other services that the government provides on my behalf. So Mr. Johnson flying in and out of Brussels pretending not to want a deal uh, for Brexit and that must have some considerable emissions on behalf of the UK population, but so would ha have the army and the navy and the police force and the NHS and all those other government departments that are using energy. So I'm going to add on another 10% for the rest of my emissions, of the rest of my emissions so far onto my current total. Okay, so after the government stuff, I think it's probably starting to get a little bit blurry. Um, is there anything I've missed? Is there anything really s simple that I should be adding on? Please do comment below. But despite all that guessing, I've now got to a figure. I've now come to a total. And I think that total is about 4.4 tonnes of CO2 in 2020 for little old me. And that's pretty interesting. Carbonfootprint.com suggests my emissions were just less than 7 tonnes. So I'm not that far away. I've obviously missed something somewhere. My whole point of episode one was that if, at least if we start to try to count, we can also try to set a target for how much we reduce. Whether that's just reduce the amount of gas we use or just reduce the number of miles we drive, we can set a target in our personal lives or in our work lives. So does your family have a target for how much it's going to reduce in 2021? What about your workplace? What about your local council? What about us as a nation? Do we really have a target and how are we going to get there? So if I'm going to reduce my emissions by 10% in 2021, I think that's a reasonable amount. The main ones that I can control surely will be my gas and my electricity and then maybe my driving. So the steps that I'm gonna try and take include maybe walking or cycling, uh, a few journeys that I might have driven. And if I go on a long post vaccination road trip, I might even look into hiring an electric car. I'm gonna to continue to think about how I heat my home, maybe trying to use my gas boiler a little bit less. Maybe a smart thermostat would help. 
I'm gonna have another go at growing my own fruit and veg in the garden, see what we can do this year. And I'm gonna keep counting. And maybe in 2021, I could be a little bit more accurate. The second conclusion I came to in episode one was that if we count, we know how much we've got left so that we can offset to live a, a truly carbon neutral or a net zero lifestyle. So for the last year, my 4.4 tons could be offset over the next 40 years if I planted four and a half trees. I'm not sure how many half trees there are in the world, but if I planted four or five trees, that would be offset in the next 40 years. Assuming that they grow to full grown beauties with full lives and live at least 40 years. Or I could plant 175 trees this year, which would offset all that 4.4 in a year. Great. Or I could pay a website like carbonfootprint.com, anywhere between 50 and 100 pounds, to, to take away that four and a half tons for me. Or I could subscribe to a website like Ecology that would probably take that four and a half tons in about four months. Amazing. Or I could do all of the above. I could plant trees, I could give money and I could subscribe. Maybe I'll do that. Whatever I choose, I can start to estimate my balance. I can look at how much in debt I am or how much more I should have um, and understand my budget for the future. And for context, the International Panel on Climate Change, they reckon last year that we had about 268 gigatons of CO2 until we break through the 1.5 degree warming barrier. There are other estimates out there, but let's go with the IPCC to start with. In 2018, and that's the last kind of full year that we have accurate data, it gets updated every year, the global emissions were nearly 35 gigatons. So at that rate, we have seven and a half years before we break that 1.5 degree barrier. That's a bit scary. 35 gigatons would be about five tons per person. So my apparent low carbon lifestyle is basically pretty average when we look at it globally. And also it's still rapidly, seven and a half years is pretty rapid, taking us to a fairly scary precipice. So we need to do something about it. In my next episode, I'm gonna try and give 21 tips to try and reduce emissions in the UK for 2021. I hope you'll enjoy that and engage with it. But for now, thanks for watching. Please do like this video, comment below with anything I've missed or, or what your emissions would, would have been for 2020. And please do share this channel with people that might be interested and then say hello wherever you can find me on the internet or in real life. But remember, let's stop using fossil fuels to get around, to heat our homes or to do whatever we can. Let's put fossils back where they belong, in the ground, or in a museum.